Welcome back, 0K fans, to another exhibition match. This time it is Cube and Flipstep on Fissure, which I don't think I've ever actually shown off as a map. It's listed as work in progress, so it's actually kind of pretty. Anyway, Cube starting out with jump bots. Bit of a surprising choice, but sure, why not? And Flipstep has not yet chosen a factory yet. Okay, Cloaky Bot Factory. Bit more of a typical choice, but that. Actually, it's typical for a reason. Okay, so this map, I can see why Cube went for jumps here. This map is, as you can see, pretty interestingly cut up. I should point out that the uh, the water here is actually pretty shallow. Or, hang on a sec. Need to go for the pathing map here. The water is... Well, okay, it doesn't matter how shallow it is. It's actually, you can't easily path into it. Actually, it doesn't look like it's that shallow at all, come to think of it. So yeah, it's kind of hard to get across the map. There's a couple bridges, a couple very narrow bridges, thus bots. Though jump bots can get over this, and these cliffs as well. Admittedly, the cliffs are not that steep, so bots can go over them just fine. But yeah, there's definitely this jump up here that could be useful. Anyway, QA and Flipsteps just encountering each other. They know what each other started with for factory. QA, however, is expanding a bit more aggressively. Flipstep. He actually started out on the bottom side, whereas Cubay started out near the top and near the north side. The south side appears to be more defensible, but like I said, these cliffs are bot pathable. So it's not that defensible compared to this. And here, there's this one choke point. If you can keep that secured, everything else is pretty trivial. That being said, both players are likely to start expanding. As you can see, Cubay already expanding south to take these particular metal extractors and also attacking, very directly attacking Flips' base and. A tick coming in there, getting okay. That tick got in, getting killed by the pyro was pretty big. I didn't even realize ticks got ticks would explode when they were killed under production. I guess it was just done at the time that it exploded. Completely stunning this entire area, and the Kolyabot factory going down soon after. This pyro doing a great job. My goodness, Cubay is doing a ton of damage here. That this is a hero pyro, people. This this pyro, this pyro. I think it's just one QB of the game. This single pyro. I didn't expect the game. I don't think the game is this short, actually. I don't think it's quite done yet, but yeah. That pyro. I, I don't even. So anyway. I mean, Flipstep still has some ways around this. He can still attack this freak or try to do what he can to get rid of it. And he still has his commander. He still can rebuild. He can reclaim. He can get all this stuff going. But he's... Looks like he's going pure commander, getting Rye Cannon Radar, but morphing once again. And this Freaker is going to go down. Cubay losing his builder, losing his expansion attempt to the south. The expansion to the south is going to be protected, however. A Pyro coming in, another Pyro coming in. I should point out the first one's not actually dead, by the way. It's just down here. Oops, okay. Well, it's down there. This is the first Pyro. Still alive, slowly regenerating. Second Pyro. Coming down here, which will be able to get rid of this glaive. Not before the expansion attempt has been nullified, though. Cube is going to have to start over from scratch. But that being said, Cube has an economic advantage. He has taken the center. These metal extractors are actually pretty lucrative, come to think of it. 2.4 and 2.2, respectively. Nicely done there. Just point out the metal spots in this map. It's pretty metal poor. Like 2.3 are pretty much across the board, but there's only about a dozen metal spots total. Maybe a bit more than that. Actually, double smoke. Dozen on the bottom, and then another. So, a dozen and a half. That is tiny. No geovents either. This is a very, very famine map. So, that's probably one of the things that's keeping Flipstep alive is the fact that Cubay really can't push all that hard, even for the amount of time he's had. On most maps, he would have won by now. He would have had 20, 25 metal income and would be fine. But on this map, given the sheer lack of any metal extraction, the sheer dearth of metal spots, Flipstep actually has a chance to rebuild. He is now just resurrecting, and that's what he was... He was morphing for a resurrection, getting Lazarus device and Nanolith to get back his Cloaky Buy Factory, rather than, you know, rebuilding the Cloaky Buy Factory with the metal he'd reclaimed from... Admittedly, reclaiming it would actually get his metal back up. A little bit surprised he's doing it this way. Okay, he's spending metal to to resurrect. That's a point. But yeah, I'm a bit surprised he's going for the resurrection option rather than just rebuilding. He would have had it a minute sooner, easily. And at the same time, Cubay going for... Combination of Freakers and Pyros. 
going mostly pyro now and just setting up an army to finish this off. And a second pyro is coming in, and this one, however, going to be destroyed by the riot cannon. It's going to go down first, but it's... No, it's not. It's just going to be chased away. Flipstep still... Well, okay. Admittedly, he didn't lose the Clicking by Factory again at this point. Still halfway through, or two-thirds of the way through resurrecting it. But yeah, at this point, Cubay has had the only production in the entire game. I'm very surprised Flipstep has not just rebuilt the Clickbot Factory, and he's also not resurrecting it at this point. It's It has been sitting there at two-thirds for the last three seconds. Okay, now getting back to resurrecting it, but still... Not great. And actually, okay, getting his economy, not a bad idea, but still, he needs production. Production desperately. Just to get rid of these pyros that are coming in and to make sure that he's not going to lose to a concerted force of pyros. There's going to be a ton of pyros. At least six. Which on this map is quite a few, and actually with pyros is quite a few. Pyros are pretty expensive. 220 metal on their own. I mean, they are... We saw a single pyro torch this entire base. Everything in here burned to the ground by one pyro. So pyros are actually quite powerful. No use underestimating them. And... Why did Flipstep build storage? What the... Why build storage? Especially, you're not reclaiming a ton of things. I don't get that. But anyway, getting ticks up, which should be able to stop the pyros, assuming they don't die in the process of being built. Another pyro coming in here, and that is going to... Okay, where is it going to go? Come on, don't... Okay, it's going to die. It's not going to die. QB is very conservative here. However, one of the pyros is going to be turned against him. One of the pyro corpses that died is going to be turned against him, and a tick in place to stop anything else coming in from the north. Mind you, not from the south. The south is still open, which QB has taken advantage of, and this pyro is... Not quite. No, it's, is it going to pay for it? Oh, not quite. Flipstep tried to go for it. He does have radar, by the way. Flipstep does have moving radar. Should point that out. His commander is his radar. Just about done on the pyro, pyro resurrection. Biz Prize, he hasn't been producing anything, though. Clickabout Factory is done. Should probably produce some stuff here there, but he does have a pyro. That is very important. He has his a pyro of his own, and a tick about to stun out one of the remaining pyros. That pyro is 14 seconds out. Where is... Oh, that's what the glaive is. It's dead. The glaive is very dead. Bit of a bad time, too, since that pyro stunned out. Could have used some follow-up. That would have been very handy. And, yeah, in case you're wondering... No, the storage is not... There was no metal excess. Slipstep was not accessing metal at this point. He is now, but he wasn't before. I don't, I don't understand what the motivation was. Getting some Zeus, very good idea. And at this point, Kyubei has not actually started building anymore. He is folk... He's actually starting to float himself. He could use more... He needs more energy, pretty clearly. 18 and 21. He is, however, focused heavily on Black Dawn, and... I guess it's just barely... Cause, oh, yeah, he does need energy because he isn't quite able to push the Black Dawn as quickly as he'd like. But that Black Dawn is going to come up. That should finish things off. Flipstep, without anti here, he does have a Zeus. Might be of some use, but not a whole lot. He has some defenders. Once again, probably won't do it in time. The Pyro is the best option, really, for him right now for defending his Black Dawn. It can jump away from the missiles, and it can hit the air. It's very powerful that way, but won't be in the base at the time. It will be out of position. That being said, it's going out of position for a pretty good raid. QBA is not defending the southwest side. Flipstep does have some reclaim going on here. He does have some resurrection of this conjurer. And now finally getting his economy going, but he is behind by half. His army is actually very nearly the same as QBA's, though. And QBA has been producing a lot. He's been mainly going for this one Black Dawn. Admittedly, the second Black Dawn will give Cubay an even larger advantage. He only has a 400 metal advantage now. It's going to go up quite a bit afterwards, but at the same time, Flipstep not completely out of it yet. Still a little surprised he's going for the resurrection options, but at least it's something, I guess. However, Cubay does have. Well, he has his power, so he's getting placeholder. He will be able to stop a lot of the incoming forces and. Cubay comes in, or Flipstep comes in with one of Cubay's pyros, actually two of Cubay's pyros, one of them going along the direct south, one of them in the southwest, harassing. Harassed out one of the metal extractors, going for a second one. And another pyro coming in here. Both of these are Cubay's pyros, by the way. Resurrection, we haven't actually seen a whole lot of recently, but yeah, it's pretty powerful. And this pyro is going to finish off a figure while the Black Dawn comes up to get to it. And Flipstep is paying attention to this pyro. Is he going to jump? Yes! Nice jump timing! Avoids the bombs completely. Very nice reaction there. That was good to see. However, that Black Dawn's going to be able to take a lot of damage before going down. 
And another pyro in support for Cubay. One of Cubay's own pyro is going to come in along the ground while a bunch of pyros come in from the north with two Black Dons. Cubay going to try to finish this off. Same time, Rocco's come, Rocco's and Zeus along the southwest side trying to deal with this, but they have to move back. They have to defend against this. They have to get rid of this Black Dawn and a Razor up as well in time. As well as some Gremlins. Some damage being dealt, but not enough. That Black Dawn moving away. But a second Black Dawn is going to be able to get rid of that Razor and heavily damaging Flipsip's commander, getting it down to two thirds health. Not able to really hit the Razor though, so those Black Dawns have to retreat. A bit surprised the Pyros did not follow up. And Flipstep never moved his forces back, continuing to harass, continuing to get, actually get rid of this pretty effectively. There are a couple placeholders in, in play for Cubay. He does have that available. He can start to just stun out all these forces, which would be a boon for his Black Dawns, because they're not that great at dealing with in motion units. The placeholders, good combo. And Glaive coming to the north as well, I should point out, it is going to be harassing pretty ineffectively. This defender is going to stop it pretty much dead in his tracks, unless Flipstep kind of micros it around the hill. Nope! It's gone. At least he knows what's going on there, but that didn't really do much good. And a third Black Dawn has been built. These play soldiers have been set up, and now the Black Dawn's going to finish off everything here. Not able... Oh, getting rid of the Pyro, actually. Able to finish off at the end, and everything else being killed off as well. Except for the other Pyro. And down it goes. That Pyro not being jumped out. Flipstep only able to do clever pro jump micro once, apparently. Because that wasn't place held either. That that was on its own. That was fine. It could have jumped, but nope. Was not paying attention. And Flipstep now just once again resurrecting everything in his base. He is still kind of behind and does not have those pyros anymore. And if he killed a black dawn, actually, that'd be a, that'd be a huge boon. If, he, if a black dawn died in his territory and he resurrect that, that would be fairly effective. He'd go over here and deal with these caretakers at least. Everything else would probably be kind of hard to deal with, but the caretakers would be good. And to point out, Cubay has not upgraded his commander at all. Doubt it's going to come up much, but it's worth pointing out. Flipstep's at level 2, and Cubay is still at level 0. He does not have any set up here, although this Black Dawn is getting healed up. It's not going to die anytime soon. There was a chance. That chance is gone. And all these units are inside Cubay's territory. So there's no easy way Flipstep could bring his commander back there to resurrect them. He could build an Athena. If he builds an Athena, that would actually give him resurrection. That's pretty expensive, though. That's that's the cost of a factor. There'll be a minute spent building an Athena to send it around back behind enemy lines to resurrect everything here. He might do it, though, but I kind of doubt it. Players tend not to build Athenas in 1v1s. I don't know if they build them in team games very much. Certainly not in 2v2s. I've never seen them, but 1v1s, definitely never seen them. One gremlin in place will not do anything against the Black Dons. Especially with the bandits coming around here. They won't even fire the bandits, but yeah, that... Black Dawn is not going to be deterred too heavily by this. Even the two Razors, because honestly the Black Dawns could just... They could bum rush the Razor and that would just finish it. And it looks like they're going to bum rush the Commander. That Commander is going to go down right away. There we go. Flipstep loses his Commander and these Black Dawns successfully going out. No casualties on their side. Getting rid of the Commander and thus the Resurrection potential. And I don't... Yeah, I don't even think that Flipstep has any builds. Oh, he has one... One single builder, which could build an Athena. That's his only, only hope at Resurrection, but I think Flipstep's going to throw in the towel. He built most of his game around Resurrection, and at this point, he doesn't have that. And there it goes. Throws in the towel. That was game. That was a really interesting game, although admittedly, I would have liked to have seen a bit better Pyro Micro. Better Pyro Micro would have probably done it against those Black Dawns, but alas, that was not to be. So I'll have another game for you guys shortly, which will be... Uh, will it be? It'll be between Rymark and Yipa. Never seen Yipa, but have seen Rymark. He's been doing a lot of commenting on 0k balance, so it should be interesting to see how he plays out. Not to say that I should discredit his comments, just I don't, I'm curious. See how he plays, see what his style is. So anyway, stay tuned for that, and I'll be back shortly.